Welcome back to Beatier German Engineer. Today we are back with a game that we played the last time in the demo and that was about a year and a half ago and it is Terra Nil. I would say let's just jump right into it and we will see what this game here looks like. And the general premise of the game is that there is basically nothing left on our wonderful planet. Everything has died and we have the job to restore it. So let's do precisely that. But before we do anything else, we have three difficulties to start with, either the gardener, the ecologist, or the environmental engineer. I would really like to play as the engineer, yeah, it would be nice, but unfortunately, the first time around at least, we are going as the ecologist, mainly because the tutorial is on. And right now you can see we have this barren wasteland right here that we have to restore. But for that we can use this nifty turbine right here and that is exactly what we are going to do. So let's grab one and I would say let's just plop it right here smack dab into the middle. So we have unlocked the new building and that is the toxin scrubber and it cleanses the wasteland. So the game tells us where to put the first few and we of course do precisely that. All around and we can see how all the earth is now a hell of a lot nicer looking and maybe we can even plant something in it. And for that we have the irrigator. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So we can bring it on here and we can then turn it and we can see this green outline right here and we have all those different shapes available. But of course the game tells us what to do. So let's do precisely that. We're going to plop one right here and... Boy, look at that. Everything is getting nice and green. Then we're going to turn it around like this. And once again, yeah, that's pretty good. And then up here on the top, once again, last but not least, another nice close up. Let's see it. Yeah, there we go. That is pretty satisfying. I'm not going to lie about it. I am definitely enjoying myself here. Now the game tells us exactly what it wants from us. We can see here on the top left of the screen that we have to reach a greenery goal to begin with, get that greenery target to 30%. But of course, we need to reach 100% to move on. And we can also see our leaves because we have 1,129. And we can see on the bottom here, each one of our buildings costs a certain amount of leaves, 75, 50 and 50 at the moment. So that is pretty decent. Now, of course, for us to continue, we need to reach those 30%. So we're going to plop down a turbine down here in the corner. And then let's see here, maybe something along these lines and maybe something along these lines right here. Yeah, that should work. And then one of those irrigators. So let's watch it once again. Yeah. And okay, something's happening. Have we already reached 30%? Uh, yeah, <laughs> look at the irrigator. I still have it. <laughs> And here we have the title screen. Yes, we are indeed playing Terra Nil. So what is next on the agenda? First of all, we can zoom out much further. Look at this here. So this here is apparently the entirety of the map and we can unlock a new building if we reclaim 185 more greenery tiles. So that is the goal. Let's plop down a few more of those turbines here as well as our toxin scrubbers. So let's see, we can, for example, go somewhere like here and maybe somewhere right there. And also this side here we shouldn't forget. So let's plop in our toxin scrubber right here. And then maybe another one on the other side, somewhere like here maybe. We still have 713 leaves, therefore we're just gonna move on. We're gonna plop one right here and maybe another one right over here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing down here on the bottom. Here one and there one. Now that we have all of our toxin scrubbers down, it is time for irrigators. So let's do a quick compilation. And here we have it, and we're looking pretty decent. We're at 890 leaves and 57%. So we need to find us a new area, and probably right here doesn't look too shabby. So let's do precisely that. Of course, we need to start with a turbine once again. And you know what? Let's plop one right here, right here, and right there as well, just because we can, and maybe even one right there. There are a couple more things that we can do. We have now unlocked the water pump and as we can see it fills up dry riverbeds. But of course at the same time we need to keep in mind that the range is extended by elevation as that should be. Gravity is our friend. One really good location would be all the way up here and we can see how far it reaches. We can actually build it further downstream and it should be even further reaching. Something just like this here and yes look at this here the water is flowing and the riverbanks are becoming green. So let's see if we can plop in a couple more of those things another one can go right here to fill up this channel and then last but not least over here we're gonna plop another one to fill up the rest that looks pretty good for right now 
Next on the list are more toxin scrubbers, so let's plop them down. And yes, the last one is down and we getting an alert because we're below 300. So it is time to go over to the irrigators. And now we have reached a full 100% and what do we have here? Once the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. So I would say let's do precisely that. Before we do anything else, let's take a look what we have here and look at that. We already have some kind of birds flying around and look at this here. Are these leaves? I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at here. Are these bees? Yeah, I can't tell. What do we have here? We have a hydroponium creates wetlands and we have a beehive swarming bees pollinate nearby greenery creating finvas flowers. How about we plop one right here that gives us plus 60. Oh, look at that. That's pretty neat. And then right here we can do the same thing again. Oh yeah. And we unlocked the solar amplifier, but we will see what that is in a little bit. Let's see if we can create more finvas first. That should be our goal. Let's see here. And I think that should already be enough. Potentially, we do have a check mark here. I think it's just slightly delayed. Huh? Yeah, that thing's full to the brim. Wonderful. That's what that should look like. The beehives are done. Next on the list is our hydroponium, of course. So let's see how that works. Okay, we need to build them on top of the irrigators. And we are getting what out of it? What is this here? Wetland. Okay. So let's plop a little bit of wetland back here, maybe. And maybe a little bit of wetland right there. And down here on the bottom, why not make this entire area here wetland? Is anything stopping us from doing that? I don't think so. So let's plop it down quick here and there. And let's see, are we full? No, not quite. Since we don't have another irrigator that can create wetland, yeah, we will have to do something about that. So how about we take this here and make it nice. And then, of course, at the same time, plop down our irrigator right around here somewhere, maybe. And then on top of that, we need the hydroponium. So plop it in there and that should be done now as well. Isn't that awesome? I definitely love it. The next thing that we need is forest. We can see it. We have zero percent. So what we can do is we have here the calcifier. We can take the calcifier and maybe plop it right around here and it creates rocks. If we have rocks, we can use steam turbines. This is not oxygen not included. This is, of course, not a steam turbine, but a normal turbine. But we can use it and we can plop down another toxin scrubber over here and extend this area here well quite drastically actually this is uh, not a little so let's see that we can cover as much of this space here as possible and then let's plop down our irrigator and yeah now we did all of that just to burn it to the ground because we are gonna grab us the solar amplifier plop it literally anywhere and we're gonna use its ability start a fire here so let's do precisely that the leaves are coming yeah and here we have fire and it burns down everything yes our finbus is going everything is dying our buildings the grass nothing will be left over when we are done here isn't that awesome and now all we have left over are ashy nutrients and with ashy nutrients we have unlocked the arboretum and the arboretum yes it uses the ash and it creates a forest so let's do precisely that once again, we have our helpful overlay right here. It shows us negative 34. That means we will lose 34 leaves. Over here, we get plus 51 and here plus 64. But how many we have? We don't care. We want to cover as much area as possible. And if you want to do that, yeah, sometimes it's not the most efficient thing. But that is okay. Because we are not here to get leaves, we are here to get greenery. And that is exactly what we are doing. So let's keep on going right here plus 73 there and here we have a tiny little area my goodness but we will also take the tiny little area anything is better than nothing at this point so let's see if we can burn anything else to the ground after looking around for a bit we have nothing to burn down so let's create something up here on the top we can certainly plop down a couple of those toxin scrubbers right here and then make this entire area here nice and green and then we can set it on fire yeah, it should be that simple. Let's see if it actually works out this way. Because theoretically, if I plop a hive right here, yes, look at that. I plop a hive into the tree, and then we're gonna grab us the solar amplifier, and then we're gonna set it all on fire. Just as simple as that. 
and that should give us enough forest to complete this mission here. But let's watch how it burns. And there it is, nothing is left over. And once again, let's plop in some trees over here, some trees over there, and that should be plenty of trees to go around. Okay, what's next? With plant life and climate reestablished, the final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings. So let's do precisely that, because what is all this greenery here good for with all those ugly, ugly buildings? Here we have an airship that we can construct anywhere right here on our river. So we're just gonna plop it somewhere central. Now we have unlocked the recycling silo and let's see how that thing works. We can plop it, for example, somewhere down here and we can see once again the green outline and when we plop it down, let's see what happens. Yep, and everything goes in it and now it's nicely closed up. Of course, now instead of five buildings, we have one. And is that really that much better? Hmm, questionable. But for sure, we are having to do another few things here to unlock the next building. The next building is our recycling drone that we can attach to our ship, something just like that. And then we have loading docks. And the loading dock, we can, for example, plop all the way back here. And when we do that, the loading dock is being built and the little ship is coming along the river slowly but steadily. And when it reaches this loading dock, everything around it will be recycled and then the entire building itself will be recycled into the boat as well. And that is how we're going to recycle each and every one of our buildings. Of course, some of you may have noticed that our airship is right here and the furthest away building is all the way down here. So we should probably do something about that. So when we take a look here, we have an excavator and this building here is huge. Look at the size of it. But right here under number two, we have something called a research center. And the research center we can just plop anywhere, it doesn't make a difference. And now this here is what our excavator looks like. And what can we do with it? Well, let's plop it down and let's see. It powers up and then it goes whoosh and all the way through. And if we have enough water pressure, it will fill. If we don't, as we have right now, we can help it out a tiny little bit. And now we can just grab our loading dock and plop it right there. And that is how we can access almost anything on the map by creating channels in the ground. But that is of course not the entirety of the game, because there are a couple more things. Up here on the right, we can see this humidity slider and it says we are at 42%. And right here on our arrow, when I open this up, we can see that we have some things that we want to achieve here. And that means we will have to get at least to 90% humidity. So let's do precisely that. Right here we have our cloud seeder and this thing here is used to increase the humidity. So let's see how this thing here works. Just like our turbine, our cloud seeder here needs a foundation made of rock and it tells us above by how much it will increase the percentage. So we have seven here and we have eight over here. So we will definitely go for the number eight. So let's plop it down and we can see that our humidity is now at 50%, just as simple as that. So let's plop a few more of these down. And now we have reached 90% and it has started raining. Look at that. Yes, all these tiles here are slowly but steadily filling themselves in with green without using an irrigator or anything else. That is the benefit. If we can unlock rain, it will do it for us. Now that we have done that, let's take another look. We have more things to recycle before we can move on. So let's see where we can go with our landing dock next. I would say an excavator over here would make short work of it. And a second excavator is needed right here, and that should get the job done. So let's put in our loading docks, one right here, one right here, one right there, one down here on the bottom, one right here in the middle, one right here so we can get the buildings on the right, and one right here to get the buildings on the top. And at this point, the game tells us where the last buildings are. Okay, we've got one over here. That is simple. We've got one right there. That should also be simple. Yes, right here. And then these buildings right there. Let's see. Can we get them all? Yes, we can. Right here. Just as simple as that. We should have recycled everything. Now our boat is coming back, but we can see it. We are at 100% recycling, but that is not helpful because now we have unlocked a new building and that is the Animal Observatory. So let's plop that thing right around here because it doesn't matter. And then let's see if we can find us some animals. When I open up this menu here, you can see all those undiscovered animals. And if we go somewhere and we scan, for example, right here, 
look at this, we just found a deer. And sure enough, we have now a deer in the game. Look at them grazing in the rain. Let's see if we can find a few more. You can see we get a tip every time the small amphibian lives in the reeds of a wetland near a Finbus field. So let's see if we can find something like that. And it looks like right here we have both the wetland and the Finbus field. So let's see, are we having frogs? And sure enough, the frogs are here and they're hopping around happily. Next, we need a large carnivore that lives in a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. So let's see if we can find something like that. We don't have a beehive. Okay, let's plop one up here. We only have one on the bottom, but not on the top. So let's remedy that and let's see what it says. And of course, we have brown bears. Isn't that wonderful? This one here could become a problem because it says you we need a, a large lake when it is not flying. And I don't know what exactly counts as a large lake. Yes, this year counts as a large lake. And sure enough, we have geese available to us. Isn't that awesome? Right here beside the deer. Next on the list, we need a river near a forest. So maybe this here counts as a river. Let's see if it does or not. And it does not, but it does count the forest. So that is nice. And it tells us here that we have the requirement partially met. We are in the range of a river, but we are not on the river. So maybe we can try it over here. I'm not entirely sure if that counts. No, that doesn't count either. But where else would we have a forest? And after trying around for a little bit more here, we have our beavers. Yeah, just look at them swimming around right here during the rain. And then last but not least, we have a predator that prowls in a forest near to a source of prey. So let's see if we can make that happen. Maybe right around here. No, it's not enough forest. Okay, so maybe we can find more deer back here. And then maybe we can get those what looks like a wolf on the picture right there. Yep, timber wolf six out of six we have all of our optional things here completed and now last but not least we just gotta pick up that last building something like this here and we should be at 100 percent the only thing that we don't have is 100 percent humidity but i cannot imagine that that is absolutely needed because we have completed everything else we have found all the animals all the optional goals so i would say let's lift off and let's see what happens Okay, we're turning slowly but steadily. A bird almost hit our rotor. That was a close call there, my friend. But we are taking off. What about our boat, though? Our boat is still here. Eh, well, I guess can't take it all. No, we have a magnet on board. Of course we do. We thought of everything. Yeah, look at us. I would say we are environmental engineers after all. And here goes our ship, and it's just going out of bounds. And of course, the wasteland is reclaimed. Oh, look at this here. It looks like we have unlocked the entirety of this planet that we are currently on. And biomes restored 3 out of 3, animals discovered 6 out of 6, and climate thresholds achieved 7 out of 7. And we are at 70% because it looks like later on there may be another level in the same region. But the next region is tropical and that is most certainly what we are going to tackle next time around. Looks like we have beaches, mangroves, tropical forests, and coral reefs. So we will see how that goes in the next episode. But if you enjoyed this type of content, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like on the video, and of course, comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that, I say thank you and peace.